Indian Muslims belong to a variety of backgrounds, cultures and experiences. They do not constitute a single homogeneous and monolithic entity. They have big contributions in the nation building, yet they have failed to create a progressive identity as a community. They are perceived to be backward, frozen in time, reluctant to change, who live in their own close world. Welcome to The Matrix. Today, Indian Muslim political representation is almost negligible. The politics of appeasement ever since India's independence has stunted their growth. Today, my guest is Sayyid Amjad Ali, who is an advertising guru and has worked on many brands at Lintas. We are going to talk to him about the community's image and perception management. We have been planning this for a long time, but we decided to hold this discussion after Ramzan. Amjad Sahab, welcome to the show. Let me begin by asking you, have we failed to create a good image or shall I say the right optics for the Muslim community in India? First of all, thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure being here. Um, I think what you just said, uh, a lot of it is uh, in what you just said, like uh, Indian Muslims uh, are not monolithic. I mean, they're diverse, you know. Uh, if you look at people who are in the north, they're, they are slightly different than the people who are in the south and east, you know. So it's not a monolithic structure. They are diverse. Mm. I think fundamentally that's one of the problems that it's a bottleneck that they face is um, whose image needs to be changed, you know. So that's one basic problem that I see. However, more than that, mm. I feel that Traditionally, Muslims and Indian Muslims have been, um, they, they have not been able to take change. They have been rejecting change over a long period of time. And that probably is the reason why uh, the image makeover or whatever, I mean, the kind of image that they have today uh, exists, you know. Hmm. Another important point that I feel uh, is their ability to accommodate diverse set of communities and people, mm -hmm. I think it's negligible. They are slightly rigid in their approach, mm -hmm. uh, in their attitude. And therefore, the differences that exist within the community and within the country, mm -hmm. they have not been able to address it very well. And I think that's why uh, they've not been able to make a good image for themselves. Uh, and that probably these are the reasons that I, that I feel. Right. Uh, now, Tell me, before independence, Muslims had great thought leaders. For example, you know, we, if you go way back, Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan. Do you agree that after independence, Muslim intellectuals could have played a better role for the community? I think uh, there is one direct impact of education. Mm. Uh, but before that, I think during the partition, a lot of educated Muslims migrated to the other side. Mm. Those who were left behind were not that educated mm. and they were also not that affluent. Mm. As a result, when your share of educated people went down drastically, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. your share of intellectual, you know, uh, people also went down drastically. Mm -hmm. And after independence, if I'm not wrong, the the, the number of people who received education was not that encouraging. So, not many educated people and therefore not many intellectuals, you know. Right. Uh, that probably would be the reason why uh, after a long gap, we still don't find uh, many intellectuals in the Muslim community. Hmm. If we talk about politics, you know, especially hmm. uh, Muslim leaders, uh, do you think that after independence, Muslim political leaders have done politics of passion, you know, uh, arousing passion and uh, or going by uh, towing the line of the party. They did not have their own creative, independent thinking for the community, you know, which uh, eventually turned into an obsession for them to stay in power. Uh, and it did no good for the community as we can see today. I, I think um, there are one or two, you know, lingo or terms that I, uh, we've all been hearing for a long time, you know, like the politics of appeasement, mm -hmm. I mean, to answer your question, 
the the vote bank politics you know uh, a lot of uh, because you are asking the context of muslim is a lot of lot of them um, built this um, <clears throat> uh, perception that you know probably you are not very safe here and therefore if you are aligned with us mm. um, we would you know make you more secure and will take care of you and so on and so forth and therefore mm. in order to attain power this entire appeasement went very very aggressively and uh, i would say in a way they were probably exploited that way is you know mm. that keep boarding us will keep you whatever mm. you know in whatever form will keep you safe and that probably uh, how uh, that probably was the way how they looked at indian muslims and therefore they were in a way left behind because they constantly were worried about like you know mm. that you know if i am not with them probably i am not secure mm. and they could not progress as much as they should have over a long period of time uh my personal uh, you know the, the belief is that uh, as you pointed out during partition the so called creamy layer of muslims had you know migrated to pakistan but uh, what happened back in india was that the people who were the muslims who were left behind they needed some kind of guidance and there were organizations who came forward to you know kind of give them uh, assuage their fears their apprehensions it's but you know natural for uh you know all of a sudden they were in minority uh but what they did was that they were successful these organizations were successful in integrating them into the nationalist fold you know make educating them that look islam says that you have to be you have to love your country you have to be you have to it's uncompromising you know as per the religion also however in terms of social relations though there were very various other factors in between uh you know the ghettoization the communal rights and all those things but somehow the relations with 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 hindus and other communities were not you know the social relations the cohesion was not as effective as it should have been and as continuous as it should have been what do you say yeah you you are you are absolutely right i mean it's a very very significant uh, uh point for indian muslims and i'm going forward and um, um, i think they can pretty much follow this um, uh, line is i mean their interaction with other communities uh, has been minimal you know for for whatever reason uh, they have not been able to interact integrate for a long time we always heard that indian muslims are not part of the mainstream what is the mainstream mainstream one way to look at it is are you integrated well enough with whole lot of people who uh, live together in the society um, in one way i mean uh, they were very comfortable in their own uh, you know in, in their own way of living uh, interaction was badly missing and therefore because of lack of interaction they could not be very cohesive mm. they did not know about each other so well mm. i mean like you know today uh, there are a lot of misunderstandings about who what really muslims are and what they do i mean this understanding does not exist and vice versa like you know right. uh, so because of lack of interactions if there were more interactions things would have been very different mm. people would have known about each other much better mm. and that creates a kind of a bonding which i think is what you were asking that uh, is missing badly today yes and, and not that there were no opportunities you see in during emergency uh the jamaat leaders and the rss leaders were together and they got to know each other so well but somehow later you know they did not build upon that you know especially the uh if we talk about you know other factors coming into play it was they could not build upon that you know even after having understood each other uh they could not carry forward that relations which could have been uh which could have played a very big role uh and and it it would have avoided the kind of isolation the ghettoization which has happened in the in the community and you know what happens is that we the community is wearing blinkers they are living in their own world you know they they can't see beyond because it's their own world their own uh, uh you know uh, that's how they see things around them yes you are right um there is a kind of a comfort zone that muslims 
uh, built for themselves you know mm. and it does take a lot of effort to get out of that comfort zone mm. because that's the whole idea of a comfort zone that you you are okay with what you are mm. probably they did not realize that you know one needs to get out mm. reach out mm. you know be more participative right. uh, mingle around you know uh, and it does not cost anything mm. uh, and be better bonded build a relationship mm. because eventually everybody is a muslim mm. wh- whichever community you belong to right uh, and i think that's where they missed out that bus totally mm. it's late uh, mm. it, it's mm. quite late actually sure so so now do you think that uh, uh, muslims in india need fresh thinking and innovative ideas for the community to make an image uh, you know change the image the perception which is there um Yes, um, I would say um, a lot of, unfortunately, I mean, we are talking about, uh, you know, perception change. Unfortunately, a lot of perception that's also getting rubbed off mm-hmm. to the Indian Muslims is what's happening across the globe, you know. Right. Uh, which is, I mean, it has nothing to do with Indian Muslims. Indian Muslims are true nationalists. Um, they were the ones who... decided that we want to be in this part of the world we want to coexist we want to live together mm. but because there are a whole lot of other things that are happening outside mm. it it has a cascading effect you know uh, and i mean to answer your uh, 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 question yes i mean um, they need a fresh thinking i mean it's 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 a kind of a way to just suggest something it um, uh, but newer ideas newer Uh, ways to interact how to reach out uh, fresh thinking in those directions will be will be extremely useful how to how to reach out how to interact like mm. you know and it's not that difficult it's just about taking that one step first and then it automatically starts building any and one step would get response from every other side mm. you know mm. uh, because eventually we are all one right when i say uh, you made a very interesting point that you know the globalized mm. the the things which are at play in, in in the entire world are also f- affecting muslims though they might not have to do anything with that but then of course like when we talk about fresh ideas and creative ideas we also talk about reforming uh, the muslim society you know making changes in their institutions making them more vibrant making them more uh, social making them more for instance we uh, uh, you find uk and us there's this concept of uh social centers you know in mosques they have these community centers where they meet every uh once a week and then they uh they try to make reforms within the society and see how they can you know improve their situation and the perception of muslims but that's not happening in india we have lakhs and lakhs of mosques but they are only you know sort of used for uh, uh for prayers uh, whereas there's there's been a call that you know these places can be work for a lot many other things for social you know at the time when there is there are no more prayers you can use it for giving tuitions to children you know the needy the poor uh, maybe make a dispensary a doctor can sit but all those things are not happening uh, but now let me ask you about this impact of social media you know uh, how has it impacted indian muslims and uh, do you think it has had a positive impact or a negative impact so generally there is this feeling that it has reduced actual social interaction uh, but what what is your take on social media and indian muslims social media in my judgment is a double edged sword i mean uh, currently it looks like that is skewed more towards the building to building negative identity mm-hmm. uh, but it can easily be turned around you know mm-hmm. towards more positive uh you know uh, purposes mm-hmm. uh it does have an impact mm-hmm. uh and it has massive reach mm-hmm. so one bad thing it reaches out to lakhs and lakhs of people and one good thing it mm-hmm. again reaches out to lakhs and lakhs of people mm-hmm. it's uh it's a, it's a it's a medium which probably um can be utilized very effectively for a lot of initiatives mm-hmm. that are required you know probably uh for the indian muslims in order to reach out to the masses it's a, it's a great tool mm-hmm. um, provided it's used effectively and and there is an initiative from mm-hmm. the community of course it can do wonders mm-hmm. 
Now, uh, I want to know from you because you are into perception, you know, building and, you know, you've made so many big brands uh, and you still continue to do so. Tell me, how do how does the clothing Muslim, you know, the, the way the Muslims, the majority of Muslims are dressed, the physical appearance, the kurta pajama, the skull cap or, you know, maybe hijab. Uh, how does this personal appearance influence the perception and identity of Muslims in India? Like people say, look, oh, you don't look like a Muslim. You know, so there's the stereotyping of this thing. Do you think Indian Muslims have taken their identity too seriously? Oh, I, uh, it's, it's a brilliant thing. And what you just said has happened to me also. A lot of times when I used to travel by train, you know, and during the conversations, when you reveal your name, mm -hmm. they said, oh, you, you're a Muslim, you don't look like one. Uh, on top of that, of course, I uh, came from Bihar. So they also said, oh, you don't look like a Bihari, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, it's such a uh, pointed thing that uh, there are symbols of a brand, you know. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the skull cap, if you look at the hijab, if you look at the whale, mm -hmm. they're all different symbols, you know. And your identity is built on that. But I would say, like... There are different, it's not a monolithic uh, structure of Indian Muslims, you know. Not, I would say only 5 to 7 percent, probably uh, 5 to 7 percent of Muslims uh, are the ones who wear hijab or maybe, you know, uh, put on skull cap. There's a large section which is, which is uh, without, uh, you know, a beard or a skull cap or a hijab, people like us, you know. Uh, but just to uh, talk on the point of, Yes, I mean, it does influence because it takes you in the direction that, oh, if you are wearing hijab, you would be like this. If you are a, a man with a skull cap, you would be like this. So, there are a whole lot of assumptions that mm -hmm. automatically come into play because they exist as a part of a baggage, you can say, or a part of your identity. You know, that if you are a man with a skull cap, you would be like this, you would behave like this if you are wearing hijab, which may not be necessarily true. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, uh, I mean, they, there is a different purpose. But yes, it does influence on how you're looked at in terms of, you know, uh, social outlook. Right. But uh, you see, uh, also it has been uh, the, this identity, you know, in terms of your clothing and hijab or, you know, wearing skull cap. And, uh, I mean, many people don't even know it's not mandatory to wear a skull cap to offer namaz. You can offer namaz without wearing skull cap. Uh, but, you know, it has become a tradition. It's a, it's a tradition, it's an identity. So what is happening in, while in Europe and the, and the Western world, there's be, there was a backlash because of Islamophobia, you know. The people uh, like to stay close to their religious identity, wearing hijab or wearing, you know, skull cap, having beard. You know. In India, it's been like that and it's been a tradition which people like to, you know, they have internalized that thing. That, you know, you're a good Muslim only if you're wearing a skull cap, you're wearing kurta pajama, you're beard. You know, what can be done about it? Do you think there's a way, uh, uh, there's a way out? I think, uh, of course, there's a way out. Uh, and um, I think it's more to do with how, um, you know, the popular, uh, you know, media has kind of, for example, um, cinema, mm -hmm. you know. A lot of it came from Bollywood. When you want to show a Muslim, uh, you have to, how would you differentiate unless you are making him wear a cap? Mm -hmm. How would you differentiate a Muslim lady unless you are asking her to, you know, because eventually, if you're not wearing a skull cap uh. or a hijab, you're like any other one, like, you know. Uh. So, it, it, a lot of it came from uh, uh, the popular culture, cinema, it's that this they, is how... It's also there in advertising. You know, yes, um, you know, or probably advertising is a little less, yeah, much lesser in that. Yeah. Uh, and that did build it up uh, a lot. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you, 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 you were looked at it like that, you know. So, I mean, that's how I think it eventually got built and... Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's, 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 it's completely different, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone who is not wearing a skull cap or uh, a hijab is absolutely as much a Muslim as the one probably with it. Right. And what are other common stereotypes and misconceptions which need to be corrected? And corrected? I mean, um, there are lots, uh, I mean, in terms of attitudes, in terms of behavior, mm. in terms of right. clothing, in mm. terms of eating habits, you know. Uh, I mean, it's uh, so there are, there are a whole lot of uh, 
misconceptions and stereo stereotypes that exist uh, some may be true some would absolutely would not be you know hmm. um, i mean these are some of them that uh, we just discussed we discussed right uh, yeah hmm. so tell me what uh, could you suggest some strategies and initiatives that muslims in india can adopt to improve their image and status in the country just like you know you would do to uh, a person who wants to create a brand you know how do how do we create uh, a better image for muslims in india i mean i would say muslims need to kind of reinvent themselves like mm-hmm. you know and i'm talking purely from the indian lens you know mm-hmm. i wouldn't be bothered about what's happening outside though it does have a cascading effect mm-hmm. from the uh, from our this thing i mean uh, muslims in india i think they need to kind of reinvent they need to look at or uh, other things with a law with a lot of flexibility you know right. um you need to be very open minded you need to open up be a little cool and calm address the challenges that you've been facing mm-hmm. and because it's such a diverse group i think as individuals the time has come when as individuals people have to take step like you know because there's no such community that yeah. exists you yes. know uh and there is no such leader who can guide you sure. and we don't even yeah. need leaders from the community exactly. because they have been redundant you know uh, so i'm saying as individuals one need to take step mm-hmm. reinvent themselves create conversations typical like how a brand operates like you know uh, uh make yourself accessible mm-hmm. make yourself available mm-hmm. reach out to them uh convey your point of view mm-hmm. and discussions help that's a wonderful way to move forward sure. i mean purely as a strategy right. just talk talk yeah so tell me how can muslim foster dialogue and cooperation like you talk you know about the you know you need to socialize you need to make people understand uh, why you do a certain thing and why do you have certain beliefs so that the other, other person also understands your point of view so how can this dialogue and cooperation with other religious groups in india how can foster that how can we improve that in today's days and time i think um <clears throat> see i mean first it, it's it, it's a dialogue obviously you know you 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 got to figure out i mean very small example i mean mm. uh if there is a festival mm. you can make yourself available i mean you don't need invitation you know people are very happy mm. and i have seen it myself when i go for holy milans or holy people are extremely happy right. you know when you go to a uh, friend's house in diwali they are extremely happy and vice versa mm-hmm. you know yes. these are some of the initiatives that need to happen at a large scale you know as individuals one need to because communities don't go for you know i mean there is nothing like community you just as a as a as a human being you just go to a neighbor in festivals mm-hmm. you know and uh, just kick start that mm. um i mean that's how a lot of change would start happening you know mm. uh, that's what i feel so you have in every like you said every individual has to make an effort and be in a kind of ambassador for your yes i mean uh, you eventually when i mean you become an example like hey listen that man like you know he's so good i mean right. uh, he's not like them he's, he he doesn't look like that you know so mm-hmm. i mean um, and 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 um, and people are very open you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. Uh, no matter what's happening mm-hmm. it people are very open they are able to accommodate and um, i mean the fact that mm-hmm. you know every muslim is living pretty much okay mm-hmm. is is a, is an evidence of that like you know so they are open to conversations they 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 welcome you when you uh, reach out and make yourself you know you talk to them make yourself available that's about it okay now there there have been examples within the community also of you know some sections of the community like boras bora bora muslims they've been quite progressive and successful in their outlook they are quite acceptable uh, they are uh, you, you know people uh, love to interact with them but uh, despite such success stories in the community we the community has not learned anything from them uh, what do you have to say you know uh, we have examples of Uh, you know not just the uh, sub uh, community but also we have people who individually uh, they have been great examples uh, for others to follow but we do not take those cues in i, I would just add one more thing to it if you look at sufism mm-hmm. like you know it was very inclusive and 
everybody is very comfortable with Sufism, like, mm -hmm. you know, because it's all encompassing, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it addresses pretty much everyone. Right. Um, Yes, Bora community is a great example. I mean, they wear skull caps. They do everything that a normal Muslim does, mm -hmm. and they are very acceptable. And I think because because of the way they do trade, they reached out, they invited. There is a concept, of, if I'm not wrong, of you know um, they invite people over uh, food, you know, where everybody comes and you know eats from the same you know uh, from the same. Um, uh, you know, platter Thali, that's yeah. thali or whatever mm. plates that are there. Mm. Uh, nobody has a problem, like you know. Mm -hmm. But yes, I think uh, that's one very small community. Mm -hmm. um, at a larger scale, I think Muslims, because they were not very flexible, they were not very open ended mm. um, and slightly rigid, mm. they remained where they were, did not progress as much. Social progress uh, and even economical progress has been very, very slow. But I would say social progress is what one needs to really uh, work upon very, very aggressively and uh, cohesively. Sure. The Muslims have drifted away from the mainstream. They are one of the largest and most diverse Muslim populations in the world with different languages, sects, ethnicities and castes. They are deeply rooted in the history and culture of India, having contributed to its art, architecture, literature, music and cuisine. We at Awaz The Voice have been bringing, highlighting stories of such achievement. Key in www.awazthevoice.in to read our news portal. Uh, I wish to thank you, Amjad Sahib. You, you came to our studio. I am really happy to have you uh, with me in the show. In spite of all the achievements, Muslims have not been able to make a niche and create the right optics for themselves. It's never too late. There is always a new beginning. We must work towards building a solid and positive image so that future generations and fellow countrymen love the community. We'll be back with another interesting episode next week. Till then, goodbye from the Matrix team.